So, um, just a short background on myself. I used to be a uh, Delta One trader here in Hong Kong at Citibank. I'm primarily responsible for market making exchange traded funds on the Hong Kong and Singapore and stock exchange. And fortunately, I uh, lost my job at Citi and I discovered Bitcoin. And that's how I sort of got thrown into this whole arbitrage uh, arena. Back in 2013, the first futures exchange uh, opened um, and it was a bunch of Russian dudes. No one knew where they were. Um, there was no company. It was just a pretty shitty HTML website. And that was the future of this landscape. And what I you know, saw at the time was that you could make 200% uh, per annum buying the most simple uh, financial strategies that, we, that I did at my regular job, and then I imported those over to Bitcoin. Now, those returns have come down a lot as more attention and there's more platforms offering these products. Um, but if you compare the returns you can earn doing similar strategies to uh, stock or index futures, you can make a lot more money if you're willing to take the risk and invest the time in learning. So that's what I'll be talking about today. Um, so first, just a little bit about BitMEX. Uh, so we launched in um, November of, uh, should be 2014. In the past two years, we've done about 2.6 billion US dollars of turnover on our Bitcoin and altcoin derivative products. We just recently became the largest Bitcoin US dollar exchange by turnover. Um, we do anywhere between 10 to 15 million US dollars a day on our Bitcoin US dollar uh, products. And we have over 15,000 registered users. All right, so let's just get into um, Bitcoin features. So this is very uh, conversational, so if you do have any questions, put up your hand and I'll try to answer them. Um, I'm assuming that everyone has uh, some sort of financial services background, so I might use some terminology that maybe, maybe some of you don't understand, so just um, raise your hand and make me clarify. So the most popular type of futures contracts that exist right now are uh, quarterly contracts, meaning they expire every three months. Uh, March, June, set and deck futures. Um, we currently have uh, US dollar, uh, Chinese yuan, and Japanese yen denominated uh, futures contracts versus uh, Bitcoin. And each one of these contracts has a, a different multiplier. Basically what this means is what you're trading is a fixed amount of some fiat currency in uh, Bitcoin. And I'll go over why uh, we do that in a few minutes. Uh, settlement day is the last Friday of every month uh, at 12 UTC. We take a 30 minute TWAP between 11.30 and 12 on settlement day and that's how we come up with our settlement price. And everything is cash settled in uh, Bitcoin. So BitMEX and all of our competitors are all purely Bitcoin exchanges. So you can't give us dollars, you can't give us Hong Kong dollars, you can't give us another digital currency. You can only give us Bitcoin. Uh, we happen to offer the highest leverage of any exchange locally on our US dollar and CMY products. It's 100x leverage, meaning initial margin of 1%. And we call your position or liquidate you uh, when you get to 200x leverage, which is half a percent. That's quite fun when you're trading the most volatile asset in the world. Um, so the structure that us and everyone in the industry uses for our futures contracts is an inverse structure. Uh, so this is an, ex is an example of uh, ticker. This is our uh, DEX 16 Bitcoin US dollar futures contract. As I said, uh, your margin, your profit and loss are all denominated in Bitcoin. You will poach your price in US dollars. Now, because we are settling everything in Bitcoin, but we're quoting in US dollars, uh, some funny math that will be done. So instead of trading Bitcoin US dollar, which you would expect, you're actually trading US dollar Bitcoin. So the inverse of uh, the pair that we're used to seeing. Now this is because Bitcoiners are extremely lazy. Uh, they want to see everything in US dollar. That's what you're used to. We don't want to quote uh, amount of Bitcoin per US dollar. So what the first exchange that opened in the, around 2011 did was came up with this structure where basically a contract value is a negative number. Uh, now you'll never see this display as a negative number on our front end, but if you go into our engine logic, you'll see that our contract value is negative, and that's because we're trading the reciprocal. Now this has uh, interesting uh, effects that I'll show 
right now. So all this will be made available afterwards um, if you want any spreadsheets or um, the presentation. So here uh, I have this DEX 16 Bitcoin US dollar future. You have a uh, negative one US dollar contract value. Uh, and let's say that we trade 10,000 contracts. Now each contract is worth one US dollar. So when we put in a number of contracts, that's the US dollar amount of Bitcoin that we're trading. Now the Bitcoin value of that will depend on the price. Essentially we're talking about a one over X function. So let's assume that Bitcoin US dollar price is 100, and then $10,000 is worth 100 Bitcoin. Very simple. Uh, and you'll see this is displayed as a negative number. The reason is, let's assume that you go long this contract. You are long Bitcoin. If you increase the price to 200, the value in Bitcoin goes to 50 Bitcoin. So if you just do a last minus initial calculation, you come up with a 50 Bitcoin profit. Now, if we change the sign, the positive, then the math doesn't work when you go long these contracts in the price rise. <laughs> All right, so this is a very important uh, graph to understand the behavior of these contracts. Uh, now essentially I've just plotted the price of Bitcoin from 25 up to around um, $750. And I've showed the value of these long 10,000 contracts in Bitcoin terms and in US dollar terms. Now what we can see is that the US dollar value of these contracts is fixed regardless of the price of Bitcoin. So when you trade these contracts, you are locking in the US dollar value of Bitcoin at any price. And then as we see here, we have a classic one over X function, um, asymptotic out to infinity and zero. So what this basically means is, if you go along this contract, the maximum gain that you can make unlevered is 100% because you're actually trading a reciprocal. Your reciprocal can only go down to zero. So when I go long this contract, I'm actually going short US dollar Bitcoin. If you go short something, the maximum you can go to the zero, meaning you've actually only made 100%. Whereas your loss can go to effectively infinity. So what this means is, if you go long these contracts and you put up margin in Bitcoin, if the price falls 50%, you lose all your money. Which is contrary to what you would believe if that I fully margin a position and the price can drop to zero before I lose all my equity. So essentially, because of the way that we need to trade and the way that clients want to view their positions, you're actually trading a quite exact derivative. Most people don't understand this, um, but this has interesting implications when it comes to how your positions are margined. Because again, everything is margined in Bitcoin and not in US dollars. All right, so essentially what arbitrage is in the Bitcoin world, as with anything, is creating synthetic US dollars by combining Bitcoin and Bitcoin derivatives. Now, most of the people in this room who own Bitcoin are obviously very bullish Bitcoin. They're bullish Bitcoin because it's either gonna be worth a lot of money, like tens of thousands, millions of dollars, if you know, Bitcoin is created with gold or whatnot, or it's used as frequently as these are mastercard. Or it's going to be worth nothing, or very close to nothing. So essentially, when you're buying Bitcoin, you're buying a call option. And your upside is massive, and downside is limited to what you put in, i.e. your premium. Obviously, this isn't lost on everyone in the Bitcoin space. We're all green speculators. So essentially, speculators are willing to borrow unsecured US dollars on different trading platforms to buy Bitcoin. The question is, who is going to lend these US dollars to these speculators? That would be anyone who's arbitraging the difference between futures prices and spot. So, essentially what we have done is created a sort of Euro dollar market where your Euro dollar is basically long Bitcoin plus short futures. And I'll show in a subsequent example why, regardless of the price of Bitcoin, if you have this position, 
you effectively have created dollars. And you are lending these dollars and earning a return. So futures in Bitcoin tend to trade in contango. And that's basically because, again, speculators thinking the price of Bitcoin is going to skyrocket to some ridiculous level are willing to pay very, very, very high interest rates. And essentially, what this interest rate represents is the unsecured rate of US dollars plus counterparty risk. Counterparty risk is very, very real. Uh, Bitfinex, which used to be the largest Bitcoin US dollar exchange, was hacked at $70 million for earlier this year, which was the second largest hack of Bitcoin. In 2005, Bitstamp, another large Bitcoin US dollar exchange, lost $5 million. The year before that, Mt. Gox lost half a billion US dollars worth of Bitcoin. Which basically means if anyone holds US dollars on a Bitcoin exchange, they're very afraid. Which basically means the amount of US dollars that are able to be lent to speculators to borrow is limited. Therefore, the rate of return needed to coax you to give your money to an exchange needs to be very, very high. So, the very sim the simplest arbitrage strategy is uh, cash and carry. Essentially, you will purchase Bitcoin with dollars or in a hundred dollars in this room. You'll need a large in your position. You'll send a portion of that Bitcoin uh, to BitMEX. The rest, the majority of your funds, you will send to a cold wallet or any wallet that you control, the private keys that is off an exchange. You will sell futures contracts to lock in the US dollar value of your position. And then you'll earn the difference between where the futures is trading and the spot is trading. Uh, at expiry, you either realize that position by selling the profit, the profit or loss on the futures contract plus your long position in Bitcoin, or you will continue rolling your futures positions. All right, so this is a very simple example. Let's assume you have ten thousand US dollars. The Bitcoin. Go ahead. Oh, sure. Assume you have uh, 10,000 US dollars, Bitcoin's price of 100, and let's assume that our debt futures contract is trading at $120. So, first step, we go, we send our 10,000 US dollars to an exchange, we buy 100 Bitcoin. So, now we need to calculate our anticipated profit. Our anticipated profit is going to be in Bitcoin, not in US dollars. So, we actually have, not only do we have delta on our bid principal, we also have delta on the profit that we anticipate to make by the time the futures contract expires. We need to hedge that as well. So we know we're going to make 2,000 US dollars, which is basically just 100 Bitcoin times the difference between uh, the spot and the futures contract. So essentially, we have 12,000 US dollars that we will have at the end by the time the futures contract expires. So very simply, we need to sell 12,000 contracts of this particular futures contract. We have $12,000 of Bitcoin that we know we're going to have. We've sold $12,000 of future. Very simple. Next step, sit there and wait until the end of December uh, until the settlement. Now here is just a little uh, representation of why, regardless of where the price of Bitcoin settles at expiry, you will have $12,000. So here we just have a bunch of settlement prices. This is the value of the 100 Bitcoin that we purchased at this price. This is our profit and loss on our futures contract in Bitcoin. Remember, our profit and loss is denominated in Bitcoin, not in US dollars. So at the end, we need to convert this Bitcoin profit into US dollars. That's the US dollar value of our PL, and that is the sum in US dollars. And as you see, regardless of where the price of Bitcoin ends up, we have made a 20% profit on our money. All right, so just a bit about uh, settlement. On our particular exchange, settlement is a 30 minute TWAP, and we take one minute slices over those 30 minutes on the reference exchanges. As I said, the futures are cash settled in Bitcoin. 
Now obviously you don't want to just do this trade once, you want to continue to roll your futures contracts after every expiry. Generally speaking, the longer dated futures contracts, i.e. quarterly futures contracts, roll expensive. So by the time December 30th comes around, you can buy back your DEC 16 futures contract and short H17 again to, re, to put on another funding trade. Now we, uh, we experimented with offering calendar spreads between the different expiries, but many traders didn't understand them, so we kind of ditched it. But now we're thinking about uh, bringing those back. So you can actually, as you would trade you know, HSC, HSI roles every month, you can trade the role between the different quarterly contracts in one atomic operation, which is much easier than manually going by cell. Here is a uh, real life example of how much money you can actually earn. So, this particular contract, um, our DEC 16 Bitcoin US dollar contract, was listed on the 27th of October of this year. Now, this is uh, basically the outright difference between the futures contract and spot. So, as you see here, these are the different interest rates you could have earned by putting on this funding trade. And obviously they've tended down towards zero as um, the time value evaporates from a futures contract. But as you can see, these are very, very high interest rates when you compare them to other things that you could be trading uh, in regular equities or FX or, or uh, commodities. All right, any questions on that? This so this is, if I put this trade on on the 4th of November, I would have earned 6%. Like, did it. That's it. And then you sit and wait on December 30th, you would have made a difference. So I'm quite volatile, right? The price is... This is the basis, basically. Oh, that's the basis, but the actual futures are quite volatile. Yeah. So what's the, can you talk a little bit about the liquidity of those futures and then there is a lot to market, you've obviously got to post additional margin against that. Yeah. Getting out of cold storage, getting it to you. How easy is that? Uh, so this particular contract trades about three to five million US a day um, in volume. And yes, they are quite volatile. So what I usually recommend is uh, take 90% of your Bitcoin that you bought, put it in cold storage, take 10% and put it on the exchange as margin. Um, as I said, you can go up to 200 x leverage before you get called, so you'll have sufficient time once the once the thing starts moving against you to get your money out of cold storage and then put it back on the exchange to cover your margin. Now, now you have intraday calls, though, right? It's, it's a, yes, it is automatic. So if you, you get your liquidation price, that's it. Um, there's no okay. end of day marking. We're going from your cold storage. I mean, how do you actually do that? Uh, so some people uh, can do it programmatically. Um, so they have bots. Uh, that will see their liquidation price and automatically chop up their account. Some people, if they really trust us as BitMEX and want to take our counterparty risk, will fully fund this trade. So if I buy 100 Bitcoin, I take the 100 Bitcoin and put it on BitMEX and then short the equivalent amount of futures contracts. That effectively is US dollars and levered at one, regardless of the price of Bitcoin. So you'll never get called when you do that. But then again, your whole principal plus interest is subject to our counterparty risk. Um, yeah, so let's see. So this is a live market for um, the DEX 16, so what is it? it's about half a dollar for 3,000 bucks. Um, and then it's a little bit wider, so about a dollar fifty to thirty thousand dollars. I'm done. But most of these are market makers, so if you have an algo that's streaming this, you just do TWAP or an iceberg order, then you won't be eating through uh, a lot of blow. All right. So the next. Um, strategy and probably a little bit more simple which a lot of people get started doing is arbitraging the difference between different Bitcoin exchanges. Um, 
it's very common that an exchange in Hong Kong and an exchange in, say, Europe will have a different price. And since Bitcoin is fungible and you know, US dollars are fungible, you can arb the difference between these exchanges. The only problem with doing this arb is that you need to have Bitcoin ready at the ready to sell immediately when you buy it. And that exposes your collateral to price risk. So um, what more sophisticated people who do exchange between an arbitrage between different spot exchanges uh, do is they hedge where they earn carry on the Bitcoin that they're using uh, to, to do our with. So essentially what you'll do is uh, you'll take your money, you'll split it into a portfolio of US dollars and Bitcoin. You'll take your US dollars and deposit them on a historical exchange that trades cheap. You'll send a portion of your Bitcoin to BitMEX for margin on your futures trade, and the rest of the Bitcoin you'll sell, you'll send to the exchange that historically trades expensive. Uh, and then when you see an opportunity, you buy cheap, sell expensive. And now you'll rebalance your portfolio and move the money back where it came from and repeat the process. Now this, um, in 2013, this is a very, very lucrative way to trade. In China, you can make 40% per turn. So uh, as fast as you can get your CNY out of China back into Hong Kong is as fast as you can earn another 40%. Uh, and so that particular spread lasted for about uh, two to three days. Um, recently, uh, in Japan, you can earn between five to ten percent immediately per turn. Basically, the price of Bitcoin, the JPY terms, is trading five to ten percent above where it trades internationally. And, and that's basically because Japanese people don't trust non-Japanese people, and non-Japanese people don't trust Japanese people. So no one's willing really to send money to each other's exchanges. So the prices go like this. And um, it's, this has probably existed for the past two to three days. And it seems like it will continue to exist. So I'll show you a quick example. All right, so it says they have 20 grand. Bitcoin, the futures contract, we use 10x leverage. We split our portfolio into dollars and Bitcoin. We take your earning carry on the Bitcoin that you have doing this R. And then this just shows the operation of buying and selling. Um, assuming that say the expensive is at 100, cheap is at 90, you make $1,000 on the trade. Uh, now, this was very easy to do manually three years ago. Nowadays, most people have automated trading systems uh, that do all this. And as they notice ARBs across the world, they just buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell. It's especially common in China where there are no trading fees. So the only um, thing that really matters is the withdrawal fee of US dollars between different, uh, sorry, of CNY between the different exchanges. So effectively, your ability to earn money is constrained by how fast you can process fee deposits and withdrawals and how much that costs on average for you as a trader. Well, this is just a quick chart of um, the visualization of the different arms across the world. Uh, you can find this on uh, the Quinty did produce a nice um, little chart. One very a uh, lucrative way to make money is uh, local bitcoins. Um, uh, once upon a time, I was the largest local bitcoin seller in Hong Kong. And I, my first bitcoin I bought from him actually, on local bitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> and so, because um, it's, local bitcoins is essentially just an escrow service. So as a, a seller of bitcoin, I basically deposit bitcoin with local bitcoins. I post an advertisement saying um, I'm willing to take, say, Western Union or MoneyGram or a uh, public deposit, and I'll send you Bitcoin once I get my money. Now, the premiums on local Bitcoins are very, very high. And basically, that's because lots of people won't tell you exactly what place you are in the queue, and that's because we don't want to expose too much information about uh, the liquidation prices of uh, traders in general. So, once you think this is really awesome and I want to go make some money, the next thing is, how do you buy Bitcoin? 
So these are some of my uh, recommendations. Um, if you want to you know, buy Bitcoin on an exchange, I would suggest Bitstamp or OKCoin. Bitstamp has a bank in uh, Slovenia. OKCoin has a bank in Taiwan. Uh, usually, uh, you can get your money on the exchange uh, same day. So if you uh, wire, send a wire from HSBC before 12 o'clock, um, I usually get my money to Bitstamp by the afternoon or morning in the EU. Um, OKCoin's big is in Taiwan. Uh, similar sort of uh, time schedule. If you don't want to deal with an exchange, you can go to local Bitcoins. There are, there are people who are posting ads on there, and you can buy Bitcoin you know, in a matter of half an hour or an hour. You basically, just send somebody a bank wire to their bank, and they'll send you Bitcoin, and then, then you're on your way. I bought my first Bitcoins on uh, empty box, and luckily I got out of there before they uh, went belly up. If you want to trade Bitcoin in China, that's a little bit trickier. You'll probably have to take a bus to Shenzhen, um, go to a bank, open a bank account, and then you can open an account um, at a uh, Chinese Bitcoin exchange. If you want to try out this Japanese Gen trade I was talking about, uh, there's an exchange called uh, Coin. They allow you to set up an account, and you don't need to have a domestic Japanese bank account to get verified. I, today, I was doing some checking around of the other large Japanese exchanges, and look, just what all of them require you to have a domestic yen account at one of the large banks, which is practically impossible unless you're Japanese, which is why there is this arbitrage opportunity. Um, so in terms of how do I store my Bitcoin, which is, again, as Jan mentioned, very important. You don't have a private key if you don't own the Bitcoin. And you know, it's, sometimes the changes can happen. It's just part of the game. Bitco is an online wallet. Um, you know, very good company. Uh, they try to excel at doing security for Bitcoin. The only downside to Bitco is every upward Bitcoin transaction, they charge you 0.1%. This is just a recent development that I discovered a few weeks ago. And uh, so if you're willing to put in a little bit more effort, there obviously are clients who just don't charge you to send your Bitcoin out of the environment. In terms of a desktop wallet, Electrum is one of the best uh, desktop wallets. There used to be a company called Armory um, that offered one of the most robust um, desktop wallets as well. If you want a mobile wallet, uh, something called Mycelium. It's available on Android and iOS. Uh, now, just a word of note, when you create any of these accounts, they're going to give you some backup codes. And you best practice is to print out these backup codes and take them to your, your you know, security deposit box, wherever that may be, or some secure storage facility, and put them there. Because invariably you will forget your password, you'll you know, dig your computer and lose your hard drive, but if you have those backup codes, you can recover your Bitcoin. If you don't have those backup codes, your Bitcoin is gone forever. So when they ask you to do these backup procedures, pay very close attention and follow the instructions. Now, if you want to get set up with a Bitcoin exchange, the process usually takes between one to three business days. And as I said, um, they do KYC, so you'll need a government ID, address proof, and a bank statement. And you know, generally, one to three days to get set up. If you're really serious about this, you go to this one every exchange, and you, you set up accounts. It takes it's a bitch to do, it takes a little while, but when you see that opportunity, opportunity and you're already set up, there you go, and you can make money. And then on BitMEX is it very simple. All you require is an email address and Bitcoin. Because we only deal in Bitcoin, we don't deal in any sort of uh, fiat currency. All right. So we have futures contracts, and one of the new products that we innovated on is a, a Bitcoin swap. So one of the problems that we noticed with a lot of our clients was that they didn't like settlement. They didn't understand it. Why did my position go away? Uh, so we thought, well, how can we create a non-expiring uh, derivative? And so uh, what we thought of was a total return swap. Uh, one issue with that is, how do we determine what the interest rate is to charge um, between longs and shorts to entice people to take the other direction of a trade? So uh, what we did was we said, we'll do a look back on the average premium discount that the swap traded against the spot market 
and we'll charge that as a funding rate in the next period. And so what that means is the market's ripping and the swap is trading at a massive premium. The next period, if you short that swap, you're going to receive a payment. And if you go long, you're going to pay. And these interest rates get quite high. Uh, right now, every eight hours, the maximum you could go is uh, 37 and a half basis points. It used to be 100 basis points. So when you have a situation where the market's really trending, uh, you can make over 1% a day in just interest interest costs and you put on a completely hedged position. Does the interest reset daily? The interest resets every eight hours. So some clients and some market makers uh, do a funding R on the swap. Again, the swap is just another form of synthetic US dollars. Long Bitcoin plus the short swap is essentially dollars that you're lending to speculators. And if the funding rate's positive, you as a short holder derivative are paid. If the funding is negative, you pay. Now, if you put on this strategy since we launched this product in May of this year, you would have earned 30% outright. And that's just from shorting the swap, holding Bitcoin, and doing nothing. And I don't think the price of Bitcoin has even risen 30% in that time. So this is you know, quite a lucrative strategy if you just want to earn interest. And basically that's because this product is leveraged 100x. So you're essentially lending a bunch of speculators uh, a, lot of, a lot of money. This is just a very simple example of how we calculate our, our funding rate. Um, so between periods, as I said, you look at where the swap is trading versus the spot price. In, pra in practical terms, we take a uh, eight hour TWAP with one minute slices of the premium that is observed, and then we charge that in the next period. So if you log on to BitMax, you know what is the amount of money I'm gonna have to pay on my position at the next funding time. Now, this is a discrete period, so if you hold the contract over funding, you are charged. If you get out right before funding is charged, then you pay nothing. So what you see, which is what you would expect with floating rate bond, essentially, is a seesaw effect of the price of the swap. Now here's, you know, as I said, we charge on the notional of the position we hold of time. And so this is just a simple little calculation of how much you would pay in interest. So this is our um, this is our Bitcoin US dollar swap. As I said, this is our most popular product. And as we see here, it's a funding rate of um, no, a very small amount in uh, 33 minutes. And we also tell you the projected rate. So in the next eight hours, charged at um, 8 p.m. UTC, which is 4 a.m. Hong Kong time. If you're long, you'll pay pretty much one and a half basis points on the notional of your position. If you're short, you'll receive the amount. So, putting this in practice, let's assume they want to create a thousand US, a hundred thousand US dollars lend synthetically, Bitcoin is 100, the swap is at $100. Now the, what we've you know, noticed empirically with the swap price is that this interest rate mechanism has been very effective. Our swap trades pretty much at the swap price even when it's leveraged 100 x This is exactly what we want. So let's assume we purchase 1,000 Bitcoin and we sell 100,000 contracts. Um, the swap has the same inverse structure as the futures contract that I spoke about previously. Now I'm just going to go through a one period you know, Assume that you have a funding rate of 25 basis points. So essentially your, your interest income is two and a half Bitcoin. Now, if you're going to continually put this trade on, you want to re-hedge your interest income so that you continuously compound your earnings to achieve even a greater return. So, this 2.5 Bitcoin is worth $200, so you short an additional 250 contracts at the end of these eight hours. Now this particular trade, if you just wanted to sit on it and not have to monitor at all, 
I recommend fully funding it on Bitbox, which basically means you have no liquidation price because essentially you've created a one x leverage product. And this table essentially uh, demonstrates that point. That even if I take the price down to $1, or I take the Bitcoin price up to $1,000, the value my leverage doesn't change if I fully fund my position. Now, the only uh, value where we get undefined is zero, because what is one over zero? So if Bitcoin goes to zero, then all this math kind of falls out the window, but we don't really have it. All right, so that is uh, pretty much the end of my remarks on R. Uh, some additional resources. We have a sample Python uh, market making bot in GitHub. If you are you know, programmatically inclined, you can use this. Um, if you, you know, are comfortable with APIs and whatnot, I highly suggest uh, getting up to speed on this. If you, you know, there are, I can count on the number of my hands, people who actually uh, do real market making or R uh, using these algos, and they make a lot of money. Uh, we have a blog. I post, you know, routinely do different uh, trading ideas um, on our contracts. We have a YouTube channel uh, where I have different uh, lessons on some more advanced strategies of spread trading and uh, you know curve trading using the different futures contracts. And then the example uh, spreadsheet that I've shown here that will be made available publicly. Um, so. That's all, and any questions? Um, do you know the, the breakdown of what you want to be able to do with the um, I'd say that our, our main market makers probably represent 75% of the market. And that's just because you know, they're quoting two-set markets all day. So the good thing about um, our platform is if you post a passive limit order or you know, a post-only order, you get two and a half basis points rebate. Um, so it doesn't cost you anything to trade. Yes, you make liquidity, you get paid, you take liquidity, then you'll pay seven and a half basis points. Um, the majority of our products. What else? What was the average leverage for clients trading on your exchange? 10x. Most clients take 10x. Um, the hurdle rate? How come it's uh, how come these uh, ARBs still exist? Um, because the majority of um, Bitcoin traders are technologists background. They don't understand finance. They understand this technology is amazing. I think Bitcoin's going to a million dollars. They don't recognize that they're paying a lot of interest to get that leverage. Um, and as I said, it's counterparty risk um, and lack of knowledge that this even exists. So when I was trading. Uh, I was getting 200% per annum returns on these strategies. Uh, at some, at one strategy, in, uh, when the market was going really absolutely ridiculous, you could sell a, in March 2014 future, 100% um, upward return in December. So I doubled my money in three months, basically by putting on short March long deck. Uh, so these, these things, no one knows about them because it's a very small industry, and it's still very small. The amount of traders that are doing these type of things is probably 10 to 20. That are actually providing the majority of liquidity to the whole Bitcoin market. So if you're in a short swap, you're fully funded. It doesn't matter the price. I mean, you don't care what the price is. You, you just care that I'm going to make this interest rate. Now, could you have made more money if you just went long Bitcoin? Maybe, but then you know, the time the market for it. This is a strategy where you don't you just, have time. It's just like a bomb. Yeah.